Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. My name is Punar Kahveci, and I currently teach English as a foreign language at Gazi School of Foreign Languages. And I hold an MA in English language teaching. And today I'm going to talk about my study titled EFL Teachers Professional Identity Construction and Narrative Approach. As its name suggests, this study adopts a narrative approach to explore teachers' professional identity construction based on Kelch Derman's five dimensions of teacher identity that are self image, self-esteem, task perception, job motivation, and feature perspectives. And why do I need to uh, conduct this study? What does this study promise? Why is it significant? Because uh, exploring for teacher professional identity provides offers an analytic lens through which aspects of teachers' professional lives can be examined, such as conflicts and tension they have in their career, and teacher professional is identity is also a strong predictor of teachers' teaching styles, their professional development, and the way they approach changes in education. So exploring teacher identity actually uh, offers the chance to explore many other dimensions of teachers' lives as a teacher, because teacher identity is a multifactor construct. So I base my study on these two research questions. How do EFL teachers in Turkey construct their professional identity? And what are the factors that influence their professional identity? Of course, this study is not free of limitations. The first limitation is that this study handles teacher's identity, teacher identity only from the perspective of Kelch Derman's five dimensions. There are also other models of teacher identity development in the literature, such as Mottler's and Huberman's that also involve the sociopolitical, uh, socioeconomic dimensions or the other uh, theories of identity that focus on the psychological aspect of teacher identity development or the social aspects. But this study also just uses Kelch Derman's five dimensions. And another limitation is that we, I have only one research instrument, which is an online written interview form due to the pandemic restrictions. This study was conducted in the uh, pandemic climate during the lockdown, so I couldn't have face-to-face -face interviews or any observations. And I will also provide a very brief theoretical framework on teacher professional identity, um, because it's a really complex and multifaceted construct with many dimensions that I've listed. It also has a post-structuralist aspect, for example. Some scholars suggest that identity is constructed in discourse through language and language constructs identity. So um, considering all these complex dimensions, a teacher identity is not a fixed, just a fixed concept, but is also a fluid one. It's both unitary and fragmented, fluid and multiple, continuous and discontinuous at the same time, individual and social. And it has many other dimensions like teachers' emotions, teachers' cognition, teachers' beliefs, teacher agency, which is defined as their ability to pursue what they want to do, their social status, their professional and personal experiences, uh, their lives as a student, uh, which is titled Cognitive Apprenticeships by Lorte. These all play a major role in teachers' professional identity development. So it's not this fixed, as I've said, teacher identity is formed and reformed throughout the course of their career. We are not the same person we are today that we were years ago when we were just fresh out of the college. So we keep changing. And this is mediated by a complex interplay of personal, professional, and political dimensions of teachers lies as suggested by Mokbar. Why do I adopt narrative approach to teacher identity? Because teachers' narrative stories actually automatically reveal who they are. It makes their identity transparent for the researcher as suggested by Watson. And they tell about their past lives and help us to make sense of the present. So actually storytelling is a form of meaning making for the students. So it happens automatically after the classes we teach. We keep talking to our colleagues or to our family at home about what they have been through in the classroom today or with what we have been through with the colleagues that day. And I adopt a narrative approach just like the many other studies that adopts a narrative approach to teacher identity in the literature. 
And when I come to the methodology of my study, uh, the participants were eight instructors who work at various institutions across Turkey at higher education and high school level. So actually there were no uh, teachers who work at primary or secondary schools included in the study. Seven of them were female and one of them was male. And the study adopts a qualitative, narrative, qualitative and narrative approach to teacher identity because narr uh, narratives and teacher stories reveal their identities. An online written interview form was used. They were sent this written interview form through Google Forms. And the questions on this written interview form were adapted from Catch Derman's Five Dimensions of Teacher Identity. For example, self image uh, team involved questions like How do you define yourself as a teacher? What comments do you receive from your colleagues as a teacher? And self esteem involved questions like um how do you think you how well do you think you do your job as a teacher and their task perception involve questions like what must you do to be a proper teacher what tasks do you consider essential as a part of the, your job job motivation involved questions like what's your main motive behind being a teacher and future prospects involve questions like where do you see yourself in 10 years time for the data analysis first a thematic analysis was done uh, based on the predetermined codes, which were these five dimensions like self and self esteem, task perception, job motivation, and future perspective. So, data was first analyzed from based on these predetermined codes. And then some emergent codes were brought about. Now, I'm going to move on to the result and discussion. So, the first theme was self image in Catch Their Mouth, five dimensions. So when uh, they were asked how they define themselves as a teacher, they mainly talk about their personal qualities and some specific instructional skills they have. As you see, most of them are positive, but some of them are also negative. In the negative sides, they listed panicky, too strict, rude, and in the positive side, committed, enthusiastic, energetic, affectionate, and positive instructional skills, being good at using body language, being knowledgeable, competent in one's field, using the warm-up section of the lesson to engage learners. So they listed uh, they listed instructions in the personal qualities as a part of their self-image. And as you see, they mainly have a positive self-image. And when we move on to the self in the second dimension of the teacher identity, they taught about professional skills, not just instructional skills, as you see here, but professional skills, which is more than what you do only in the classroom. In this one, the first theme I have chosen the term instruction because these are related to very specific teaching practices in, in class, but these are like more general, like having a humanist approach. Actually, they have associated their self-esteem with more general professional skills, like valuing how to teach to whom, not just their instructional skills, but also professional skills. And they have also mentioned the characteristics of teaching context as a factor that uh, influences their self-esteem. For example, one of the participants said the class size sometimes was a negative influence because the classroom were too crowded and this prevented her from teaching effectively. And some said uh, teachers' effort and motivation sometimes positively influences their self-esteem. When they are very motivated, they want to teach well too. And as you see, caring about students, personalizing the learning environment, these are all uh, related to professional skills which are related to their self-esteem and the third dimension task perception this team revealed three main categories so they have determined their designed their task perception as responsible teacher behaviors and goals here we, i have used the terms behaviors and goals because these are not just instructional skills but punctuality and also good instruction practices just like they mentioned them also as a part of their self-esteem and self-image and involving professional development also was considered a part of their task perception, as you say, and for responsible teacher behaviors too, and goals for one of the goals is, for example, to help students' personal development by presenting ideas about different ways of living and thinking, to extend their general knowledge, to make students independent learners, and very specific instructional practices like doing pre and post listening and reading activities was listed as a part of their Past perception, they consider a must, for example, and to be a proper teacher. And also they consider professional development as a must. So you might have got a very different um, um, 
very different categories or results with another sample, another group of participants, like with, that they don't that they don't have high self-esteem or high self uh, positive self-image. Like they might not have considered uh, in professional development a must to be doing the job properly. So actually, the, it, uh, these dimensions are mainly uh, defined by the nature of the participants here. And there were also some tasks they did not consider a part of their job, a must uh, for their job. They refused to do doing paperwork, translating, allowing student pass that they do not deserve, doing translation of the articles that their administrators send them, and responding to students' excuses about attendance problems. They refused to do this as a part of their job. And when it comes to their job motivation, the fourth dimension, uh, the main motive, the most commonly stated motive was having a, having an inspirational English teacher during their school years, and also family members who set a good role model for them, love of teaching and learning, choice of a teacher training high school. And like this, it means that they studied as a teacher training high school and they chose to be a teacher because of that. And job opportunities that available were listed as main motives behind their decision to be a teacher. And as I told you, the most common one was an inspirational English teacher as indicated in this participant's code. I always loved and respected my teachers. I found reasons to idolize almost all of my teachers. And when I, when I was a student, I adored my first English teachers and this might have led me towards being an English teacher. This is one of the participants' story of how to, how to choose being a teacher. And the fifth dimension, future perspectives. Uh, um, as you see, they also have positive images of their future selves. Uh, complete in, in 10 years time, most of them uh, imagined themselves having completed their present academic degrees or getting promoted to her position, being a teacher trainer or teaching specific courses as a faculty member or challenging themselves with different tasks in their institutions, exploring different areas of English language teaching, such as teaching English to young learners and medium instructions. As you see, as I told you, most of the feature styles are very positive. All of them are positive. None of them are planning to quit the job or uh, change careers. So we can say that actually there is this congruency among these five dimensions. They had a positive, they mainly had positive self-images and they had mainly high self-esteem. And this was also reflected in their tasks perception. They mainly considered um, responsible teacher behaviors and goals and good instructional skills and professional development as a must to be doing their job properly. And their motives uh, uh, behind choosing to be a teacher were also inspirational stories. And as you see, their future selves, future perspectives are also promising. And based on uh, the overall discussion and the information, the insights we gain from the data from the study, we can conclude that teacher identity construction is a holistic process, uh, not a fragmented one or discontinuous one for specifically for this study, of course, and saying this, uh, in the context of this study, in my sample. And it's a holistic process and it's based on a balance among different dimensions. So we have actually um, uh, observed a balance among the different dimensions. Like they weren't huge contradictions. Like they didn't have low self-esteem and positive feature perspectives. Like they were all congruent. There was harmony among the five dimensions. And the most dominant factors uh, that define these five dimensions were personal qualities, instructional, good instructional pro and professional skills, characteristics of the teaching context, and having good English teachers in their early schooling experience. These were the most dominant factors that influenced these five dimensions. And as I told you, you might get really different results with another sample another group of participants. 
in for this study, I have concluded that it's a holistic process, but with another group of participants, you may come to the conclusion that it's a fragmented and discontinuous process. If they have low self-esteem, maybe a positive self-image, but a low self-esteem because of very negative um, teaching environment and con context. So with another group of learners, we might have participants, we might get different results. So that's all I'm going to say about my study. Thank you so much for listening. Here are my references. And I will be very happy to have your questions. Thank you.